if I drop my body mass, if I lose muscle mass, then guess what's going to happen to my, my body fat percentage is going to go up. If I increase my muscle mass, guess what's going to happen to my body fat percentage is going to go down. I can decrease my body fat percentage without ever losing a pound of fat. What's going on, everybody? It's Coach Bronson here. And today we're going to talk about body composition. I get a lot of questions from people asking about how to find their body composition. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about four different ways to find out what your body composition is. We're going to go over the things you should be looking for in your body composition. And I'm going to give you one tip to help you use your body composition in a way that's going to help you move forward and see more success in your journey. All right. Before we do that, I want to make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Please hit the bell so you're notified every time I come out with a new video. There is at least two every week. And most importantly, please share this information with somebody who may be on a journey, may be stuck, may be looking for answers, and it can help them hopefully move to the next level. All right. Body composition. So we know body composition is a more important concept to look at when we talk about quality of life, fitness, general health, beyond just looking at the scale, right? Your body weight doesn't tell you anything. What are you, What is that weight made of? What goes inside that number? So body composition, we're looking at lean mass, skeletal muscle mass, water weight, um, inflammation, bone density. Like There's a whole bunch of things that go into how much do you weigh? We've got, we can break our body down into all kinds of different components. The question is that I get most often because when I talk about macros, I talk about one gram per pound of lean mass of protein, one gram per pound of lean mass for, for fat or carbs or fat and carbs combined. So people often come to me and say, well, how do I know what my lean mass is? What's my body fat percentage? You know, we, we say you can figure out your lean mass by taking your weight divided by your body fat. And then whatever's left over is your, your lean mass, right? If I, if I weigh 200 pounds and I'm 25% body fat, then my lean mass is 150 pounds. Well, then the next question is, how do I know what my body fat percentage is, right? So it's kind of a circular thing. What do, how do I get these numbers? So let's talk about that. There's four main ways for you to get your body composition information, okay? I'm going to give them to you from most accurate or least accurate to most accurate. And then there's some caveats that go into these, all right? The first one is body measurements. And that's basically taking a tape measure and measuring at different points of your body, your arms, your upper body, your chest, your waist, your thighs, your legs, your calves, different areas of your body. And there's everything from a seven point test to a three point test. Like, uh, sorry, that's calipers. We'll talk about that next. There's a bunch of different calculators you can go to online that basically say, if you measure these three points or four points or five points or six points on your body, put those in with your age, your weight, and then we'll calculate, we'll estimate what your overall body fat percentage is. That's the easiest way you can do it. That's probably the, the simplest, easiest way. If you go online, I think the most common one that people use is the Navy body fat calculator. If you just go to Google and type in Navy body fat calculator, it gives you, here's how you get your measurements. Here's you put your numbers in, and then it will it'll give you an, a rough estimate of your body fat percentage. And that's a starting point. Okay. It is not as accurate. Number one, because it's entirely calculated, right? There's no actual evaluation of the physical aspects of how much you have of anything on you. It's going off of measurements and, and ratios and percentiles and all sorts of other things. Okay. So is it going to be close? It might be close. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about which one of these is best to use and how to do that at the end when we talk about how to evaluate these numbers and how to use them to, to manage your progress right? It's better than nothing. Okay. The second one would be skin fold calipers. So we have body measurements, tape measurements, girth, right? How, how, how round is your arm? How round is your leg? How round is your waist? All those things combined. How tall are you? How old are you? How much do you weigh? And it figures all that stuff out and calculates, say, you are around this percentage. And that gives you something to work with. Then we have skin fold calipers. And that is where you get a device that's like little pinchers. Okay. And you grab a fold of skin right? Let's see. You grab a fold of skin and you measure the thickness of that skin and kind of, and it estimates, well, skin should be this thick in double layers. So that means if it's this thick at this, you know, this much skin that I've grabbed about an inch in, then you should have X amount of fat in your skin, subcutaneous fat in the skin, right? 
And you do that in a bunch of different points. I think that one is also, there's a three and a seven point. There's different numbers of, of locations everywhere from your, your, your shoulder blade and your back to your underarm, to your bicep, to your, your inner thigh, your side, all, your calf, all the different things. So you measure a bunch of points and it's the same thing. You put those numbers into a calculator. You can just go Google online, skin fold caliper test calculator, and you get that little ca- ca- thing and you put it in there and it will tell you what your body fat percentage is. It's a little bit more accurate than the tape measure um, because you're actually measuring the physical properties of the skin um, and they have pretty good formulas again, but it's still formulas. It's still calculations all together. Okay. All of these things are, by the way, um, trying to figure out what these things, you know, that's one thing to remember is none of these are a hundred percent unless you're dead and they dissect your body and weigh everything. No one's going to know exactly hundred percent. They're all calculations. Okay. But there are more accurate calculations, calculations and formulas that have been shown to be more accurate and more consistent than others. Um, so that's the second one. So measurements, skin fold calipers. The other thing to remember about those two things are those are independent and variable based on who's doing them. Okay. If I have three different people at different times do my measurements or my skin fold calipers, I may get slightly varied, slight variations because they may not do it in exactly the same place or exactly the same way. So the variations between that needs to be accounted for. I need to at least be aware that I did three tests and each I had a different person do it with me each time. So there may be some, some variation in those numbers, not freak out. Okay. That's one, one thing to remember with those. The third one is bioelectric impedance. And this is um, what you see most common because it's the most accessible option for consumers. Okay. It's the scale that you get on that's got an electric current that goes through your body. And based on how many different currents, the different frequencies, where they're located, how many points of contact you have on the device, all these different factors goes into the accuracy and how they calculate all the stuff in your body composition. Now, some of them can get really in depth. You can go get a, a, um, a medical grade or commercial grade in-body machine, like a 270 that has the big stand-up thing and you pull the arms out and you do all this kind of stuff and you got six or seven, eight points of contact um, and it gives you cellular hydration and visceral fat and all these other things. Um, or you can just get a basic general handheld one that's got you know, two points of contact and you hold it and it gives you a general idea of your lean mass and body fat percentage. So there's a range. Usually these are the the kinds of things you see in gyms. These are the kinds of things you see in people's homes. We have an in-body at home device that I love. Um, There's actually a new one that came out that I need to, I've been thinking about getting because it includes some new information that the current, the, the older ones don't have. It's brand new. It just came out this year. It has I think it has visceral fat. It's got a couple of other things added to it that the other, it's got some segmental stuff like, you know, upper body, lower body specific data, things like that, that I really am interested in seeing how that works. So we might be getting a new in body at home device here shortly. Um, but yeah, so bioelectric impedance is also the most common in scientific studies because again, it's most accessible and it is very accurate consistently accurate. It will read what it sees every single time. All right. Now that gets into a whole nother discussion. If you want to, I have a video on how to read your in-body, how to read um, a bioelectric impedance scale, how to prepare and how to, to do the process of getting on the scale and making sure that it's consistent, that you're doing it the same way every time, things like that. I have that video um, on my YouTube channel. Go check that out. I'll put a link up here so you can see that. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com, sign up for updates, the book comes out in September. The fourth option is a uh, DEXA scan. That's a dual energy X-ray absorptiometry. All right. And basically it's an X-ray. This is one of the 
upsides and downsides of doing a DEXA that I don't know if a lot of people talk about, and that is it is an x-ray. Okay. So there are some people who are averse to going in x-ray machines and having that radiation blasted on your body. Um, but at the same time, it is seen as the most accurate because it's taking an image. It is seeing exactly what's on your body now, and it doesn't get the formulas and the calculations that they use with the DEX are, are different than the formulas and calculations they use with biologic impedance. So it, it tends to be a little bit more accurate. Um, but again, it's still formulas. It's not going in and physically examining every cell in your body to see what's fat and what's bone and what's muscle and what's water. Okay. It's still taking a picture of it and then estimating based on a calculation what it sees. So just remember, it doesn't matter which one you do. Now, DEXs are more expensive. It, again, they tend to be the gold standard in what's the most accurate. Those are the four different ways. We'll talk about what's coming next, okay? I'll talk about how to approach those four different options. If you had to choose between the four, what I would recommend and how to use them for your benefit. We'll talk about that next. Well, in a second. The thing, the really cool thing that we need to understand is what are we actually checking? So these are the four ways, measurements, calipers, biologic impedance, and DEXs. Now, what are you checking for? Here's, here's the things that you're looking for. Primarily, I'm going to give you six things that you need to be looking for. Okay. Body fat in pounds. How much, how many pounds or kilograms based on where you are, how many pounds or kilograms of fat do you actually have in your body? Okay. What is your body fat percentage compared to your entire body weight, your total body weight? How much does, what percentage of that is fat? Then you're looking for your lean mass in pounds, and then you're looking for your skeletal muscle mass. Now, lean mass is everything that's not fat. Skeletal muscle mass is specifically just the muscle that's attached to bone. That's the muscle that we see, our biceps, our triceps, our chest, our back, our legs, things like that, right? That's what we're looking for when we talk about skeletal muscle mass and skeletal muscle mass percentage. So we need skeletal muscle mass in pounds or kilograms, and we need skeletal muscle mass percentage to total body weight. Just like we have body fat percentage, we need skeletal muscle mass percentage. Why is that important? Because there are two different ways to change either. If I drop my body mass, if I lose muscle mass, then guess what's going to happen to my, my body fat percentage? It's going to go up. If I increase my muscle mass, guess what's going to happen to my body fat percentage? It's going to go down. I can decrease my body fat percentage without ever losing a pound of fat. Think about that. So we need to know both numbers because we can manipulate both of them. Okay. And then the last thing I want to add in there is you want to know what your visceral fat rating is. Some, some devices um, do it in pounds. Some devices do it in percentage. Some devices do it in a rating. They give you a scale of one to 10 and you know, you want to be under four. Um, so if you're at six, you know, you got to work on your visceral fat, that type of thing. So just understanding where your visceral fat is in the recommended range. Um, and that's another thing with the calipers and the measurements, you can't get all this information. So with calipers and measurements, you're limited in the data you get. You can get your, you know, your overall weight and you can get your body fat percentage and that helps you get, figure out what your lean mass is. And then you're done. You can't get your skeletal muscle mass from that. You can't get your visceral fat from that. You can't get anything else. Okay. The bioelectric impedance and the DEXA scans is where you start getting into the much more detailed numbers that go into more of, of a bigger picture of your body composition. All right. So those are the things you're looking for. Now, real quick, I want to make a recommendation for body fat and skeletal muscle mass. We talked about them being two sides of the coin. You can manage both of them when it comes to body composition. For men, I want your body fat percentage to be around 20 or less. Okay. We're not going to get into the total ranges. I'm just giving you a, rec a basic recommendation. And your skeletal muscle mass percentage should be about 45%. Okay. So 45% of your weight should be about, should be about, should be skeletal muscle mass and 20% of your weight should be body fat or less. Women, I'm looking for 23% on average for body fat percentage and 40% skeletal muscle mass. The reason why both of these are important, I need to highlight this, is I particularly have women who are coming to me in the program as clients or just in general 
I talk to them on social media or at conferences who are at 40, 45, 50% skeletal muscle mass. And they're at 16, 15, 13% body fat. And they're asking me how to get leaner or they're asking me how come they can't sleep or why is their cortisol high or this or that, or I'm tired all the time or I can't, you don't have enough fat on your body. And I know you don't want to hear this. I know you don't want to hear this. Okay. If your skeletal muscle mass is higher than the recommended percentage and your body fat percentage is lower than the percentage that's recommended, you are underweight. You need to put on fat to be healthier. I, I know you don't want to hear it, but I guarantee you will feel a million times better when you do it. A million times better. Everything will become so much easier for you in the process. Something to think about, guys. That's why it's important to know your skeletal muscle mass percentage and your body fat percentage. All right. Now, the important thing, how do we use all this information? So we know how to get our body composition. We know what we're looking for. How do we use it? Okay. There's one word I want you to take home with you, and that is trends. It doesn't matter which option you choose. Choose it and stick with it, and that's the one you use. It's not about the number specifically. It's about using that number and how that number is repeatedly added to the to this data set of information you have to let you know if you're going in the right direction or not. If you're tracking it and your numbers are going in the direction you want them to go, then you don't need to change anything, right? Because my trend is going the way it needs to go. Now, that doesn't mean if it changes on day one and on day six, and it's not the direction I want to go, that I got to freak out. Ends are four, six, eight, 10 weeks at a time. Okay. So a trend is multiple weeks because you may have a couple weeks where things go up. Something happens at work, you get stressed out, you put on some, some body fat or you're more inflamed. So the, so the, the scale reads you as having more body fat, even if you may not. And then things calm down at work, you get back into track and then you come back in and now you're lower than you were the two weeks before because you've stayed on process regardless of what the weight in the scale says or the number on the scale says, right? There's a whole nother topic. We'll talk about staying on process regardless of the numbers um, because your body's going to fluctuate based on things going around you. And if you change what you're doing every week based on what the scale says, you will never see progress. The process and the things you're doing have to be consistent over time. The trend over a four, six, eight, 10, 12 week period is going to tell you if it's working or not. Then you can make a change and a shift and a tweak, little tweaks. You guys are going to get me going on a rant. All right. So trends are the most important thing. Take these things, follow the trends, make small changes. Okay. My recommendation, and this is what I recommend to, to all my clients, um, is what we do. It's what I do myself. Like I said, I have an in-body at-home device. There's a link in my description here. You can click on it, go get one. It is highly accessible. It is highly easy to use. And if you're using it solely, then it is a great tool because it will consistently give you the information that you're looking for and will provide that trend of detailed, specific data that's going to help you move forward. All right. Take it easy, guys. Hope that was helpful. Hey there. Did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community. You can meet other people. You can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.